Welcome to getting started with PopDoc. The purpose of this video is to help you get started with your new PopDoc subscription. Before we get into the details, meet your customer experience team. Think of us as your E1 coaches. Whether you want to know more about PopDoc, SmartConnect, or any of the other GP products that E1 offers, you can rely on us to be your guide. There are five easy steps to get started with PopDoc. By the end of this video, you will know how to create your PopDoc account, connect the service to your Dynamics GP server, add your existing smart lists and favorites, add users, and access training. Now, this process can go as fast as you want, and many of our customers have connected PopDoc to their GP environment and started creating custom lists in as little as an hour. So let's get started. There's nowhere to start but at the beginning, and that means creating your PopDoc account. Once a PopDoc subscription starts, your PopDoc environment needs to be created before you can complete any other steps. A few things to think about when creating your PopDoc account. The first user will also be an administrator. So if your partner creates your PopDoc account for you, they may have one of their consultants assigned as the first user. Now, if you'd like E1 to create your account, please send the name and email address of the individual you want as administrator to our customer experience team. When creating your PopDoc account, you will be asked to select a region. This determines which cloud region your PopDoc environment lives in. If your business operates in multiple regions, we recommend selecting the region where your subscription was purchased or where your GP server is located. Now, regardless of who creates your PopDoc account, the process is exactly the same, so don't hesitate to reach out to your partner or our customer experience team for assistance. To create your PopDoc account yourself, we'll sign into the E1 portal at e1solutions.com, click on My Account, and Renewals and Keys. You'll see your PopDoc subscription here, so click the words PopDoc subscription, and then click Set Up PopDoc Account. Now remember, the first user will always be an administrator, and since you're signed in as yourself, your email address will auto-populate here. So if you want to be the administrator, you don't have to change anything at all. Select your region, agree to the privacy policy, and click Submit. After a few minutes, you'll receive an email with a link to create your PopDoc password and sign in. This is an expiring link, so you only have 24 hours to create your password and sign into PopDoc for the first time. With your PopDoc account created, it's time to connect to your data. This is a two-step process. First, the PopDoc web service needs to be able to talk to your GP server. We know you have put a lot of effort into protecting your server against intrusion, so we have built encryption into both options for connecting to your network. You can find a separate video and documentation on our YouTube channel and website with more information, but at a high level, your options are to 1. Use our data gateway that utilizes an SSL certificate for encryption, or 2. Create a direct connection rule in your firewall that utilizes the TLS encryption that the internet runs on. Either option is secure and allows PopDoc to talk to your GP data. We encourage you to have a conversation with your IT resources and partners to determine which connection option is best for you. If you have questions about either option, we have answers. Once you've completed the access step, it's easy to add the GP connector. Simply navigate to the connector settings in PopDoc, select Dynamics GP, and choose either Gateway with Token for the Gateway option or SQL Server login for the direct connection option. To add the GP connector, we're going to click on Connectors from the home page, click Add Connector, and select Dynamics GP. There's a few options in here, but the two we're concerned about are SQL Server login, which would be the option you would use if you created a direct connection rule in your firewall, and Gateway with Token Authentication, which is the option you would use if you use the Data Gateway. So I'm going to enter in our gateway URL, and then I'm going to enter in our token. I'm going to click Validate. PopDoc is going to talk to your GP server through the gateway to make sure everything is configured correctly. When it comes back and says Connect, I can click Connect, and that will begin adding the connector. What's going to happen here is PopDoc is going to generate some out-of-the-box lists that just come with the GP connector as well as generating default favorites on default lists and creating details for those lists.
Once that's completed, we can edit the connector and verify that we're looking at our data by clicking on companies and seeing our company. We can even select a default company here if we want. Once connected to your GP server, PopDoc can import your existing smart lists and favorites. Once my GP connector is added, I can add my existing smart list from GP by editing my connector and clicking on lists, choosing the add lists button at the top right. From here, I'll be able to view all of my existing smart lists and anything that came from smart list builder. Choose purchasing in this example. I'm going to choose purchase requisitions and add. When I scroll down, I'll see that it's adding the list. And when this is completed, it'll appear in the list above. And while that's doing that, let's take a look at importing favorites. I can click import favorites at the bottom. Now I can choose to import my favorites either by the favorites or by the user that created them. In this example, I'm just going to choose by favorite. So I'll select favorites. I can click over here on the do not import and select either a team or a user to assign these favorites to. In this example, I'm going to assign them to my finance team. I can also choose assign all if I want to bring in all of these favorites, but I might want to be a little selective about what I bring over. After that, I can click on import and my favorites will now be available in PopDoc. Now that PopDoc is connected to your Dynamics GP data and your existing smart lists and favorites have been added, it's time to add users. There are two kinds of users in PopDoc. There are app users and widget users. Now app users will log into our web app to create and consume lists. They'll have access to a dashboard that gives them fast insights into their data. They can create ad hoc reports that allow users to drill into that valuable data. They can create favorites and share lists with other app users. They can create custom lists that combine data from multiple data sources, and they can export to Excel or PDF. We all know your Excel warriors aren't going anywhere, so help them prepare their data to work faster. Or don't, you can disable exporting. Now widget users aren't required to log into the PopDoc web app. They view the data embedded in the app where they already access information, and they will only have access to the data the widget designer granted them. Let's talk about some best practices. The first best practice we have is to create teams. Before an app user can view any data, they need to be given security access to both the connector and the list where the data can be found. Now, these permissions can be applied to users individually, but utilizing teams is a much more efficient way to manage security for groups of users. Favorites can also be assigned to a team, making onboarding new users even easier as the lists and data they need will be ready and waiting as soon as they are added to the team. You will also want to assign roles to your users. Now, roles determine what they can do in the web app. That might include adding, maintaining, and deleting connectors, managing user security, creating and managing custom lists, creating and managing widgets, and exporting data to Excel or PDF. Now, widget users don't need to be named users in the PopDoc web app, but don't be afraid to add them. Security is managed by the app where the data is embedded. For example, if a widget is embedded in CRM, the user needs to have a login for the CRM to access the data. To manage our users, teams, and roles in PopDoc, from the home page, we're going to click on the security menu. To start with, I want to create a team, so I'll click on teams on the left. Let me click here to add a team. Let's just call this team finance. I'm going to go down to the connectors and select my Dynamics GP connector and then select Dynamics GP. From here, I can grant access to the companies and specific lists that I want this team to have access to. Take note of the select all and select none features on the top right as well. With my security set for my team, I'm going to go back to the security menu. Let's take a look at our roles. There are three default roles out of the box. I'm going to edit the user roles as an example. And when I click on permissions, you can see that they only have access to export data to Excel. But I can grant any other permissions within this role that I want them to have, whether it's managing connectors, security for users, customizations, or developer features like creating widgets. You can create as many different roles as you like here. You can edit the existing roles, whatever works for you. Once my teams and roles have been defined, I'm going to go back to users and I'm going to click on invite users. 
If I can add as many email addresses as I want here, separated by commas, spaces, or semicolon, and then I can grant a team and a role to apply to those users. You can't mix and match teams and roles when adding users, so you'll want, want to add users in batches that will have the same teams and roles. What's the most difficult thing about getting new software? Learning how to use it. We have you covered with training options. Now, all users gain access to E1 University when they are added as users to PopDoc. This training is free, and PopDoc users get access for the life of their subscription. They can revisit the training as often as they like to master topics ranging from basic navigation to creating custom lists. And customer experience is always available to answer questions at any time. After you complete the steps in this video, your organization will have access to your GP data in PopDoc. But this is just the beginning. There are many ways to use PopDoc in your day-to-day -day operations. If you have any questions about the steps we discussed today or new ways to use PopDoc, don't hesitate to reach out to your GP partner or the E1 team. Thank you.